G'day, I'm Yuki San Dev, and in part four of this series, Unity for the Absolute Beginner, we will be looking at the primitive objects, their properties in the inspector, and physics. Alright, so now we're all installed and we know our way around the interface a little, let's start doing some stuff. So today we're going to have a look at Unity's primitive or basic objects and their properties and components. We'll also change a primitive's color and give it a texture. And we will add a new component, rigid body. Um, then we can work with physics to get it to fall when it's in the air and control what it does when it hits the ground. Uh, and then we'll finish off building a small structure of some kind. So let's get started. So Unity has a few basic 3D primitives or basic shapes on offer to get you going. We've got cubes, spheres, capsules, cylinders, planes, and quads. Uh, I'm not going to worry too much about quads at this point. So let's create a cube. Right click in your hierarchy and select 3D object and cube. Um, now if you can't see the cube in the scene after creating it, then remember you can always focus on an object in the hierarchy by clicking on it and pressing Shift F. Now, in the inspector, we can see that cube's properties. Um, all primitives come with these basic properties. More can be added, uh, which we will actually do shortly. Um, so firstly, to note that almost all of these properties and more can be manipulated using c -sharp script, which we will start doing later in the series. But for now, we're just going to make changes in the inspector window. So first, let's look at the transform window. Um, so before we start, let's uh, reset the cube's transform properties. So click these three little dots here and select reset. Uh, so now the position and rotation should now all be zeros and the scale should be one. Um, so the position is of course the object's position in the scene, uh, X, Y, and Z. If you use your move tool in the scene toolbar and grab, let's say the red line here, uh, then you will see the X value change in the inspector and green for Y, and blue for Z. Uh, rotation and scale are on the same color codes and axes, so if I was to select rotate and drag the red line, then the X on rotation would change. So as you can see, we can use floating tools in the scene to change the position, size, and rotation, right? Well, you can do this in the inspector as well, only in the inspector you can be a little more specific as to the amounts. So first of all, if you wanted to use the inspector in a similar way to uh, the floating scene toolbar, then you can just drag the individual axes in the inspector by just hovering your cursor over any of these letters and you will see this little slider. Hold your left mouse button down and drag left or right and watch what happens in the scene. So I'm dragging uh, X on position and you can see the cube moving on the X axis. Uh, and you can also do the same with rotate and scale. Uh, with the scale, let's say you wanted to make a shape bigger but not lose its proportions, then you can click the constraint to lock all the axes to do the same so it won't change its form. Um, you can also type in the values that you want. So just let me reset this cube back to its original state. Right, so let's say we want the cube to rotate exactly 45 degrees on the X axis then you would just enter 45 in the X window of rotation and voila, you have the exact rotation you want. Uh, so one last quick thing is the presets. Um, anywhere you can use a preset, you will see this little icon here displayed. So a preset in the case of transform would save or load a preset for position, rotation and scale. So move, uh, just grab your cube and move it somewhere else then click presets and save current to then give it a name uh, let's call it test pause and click save now go back to the cube and reset its transform so everything's back to zero again and now click the preset button again and select the preset you just saved and the cube will return to the earlier state that it was in uh, you can create a new folder in your project window for the presets and drop it in there if you want to keep things tidy. Unity will keep track of it when you move it. As you can see, it's still there. Uh, all right, moving down to mesh. Mesh is uh, pretty quick for now. It's basically just the frame, 
uh, frame, body, skeleton, whatever you want to call it. Um, if you click this little circle here, you can see the mesh's makeup for this cube is 24 vertices and 12 triangles. Yep, I said triangles. Everything's made of triangles. Um, you can also see the same thing by selecting the wireframe from the draw mode in the scene. Mesh renderer. I'm not going to dive too deep in here because that could take a while. You can see there's a lot of items. Um, we will get to these things eventually later on in the series. But let's, for now, have a look at materials. So I guess if you can think of the material as a wrap over the wireframe of the mesh above, um, on top of the material could be a simple color or a texture. As you can see, there is already a default material. That's the boring one that you see covering the cube right now. So let's replace that material on the cube. Uh, so create a folder in your project window by right clicking and selecting create and folder and give it the name materials. Then right click the materials folder and create and then material. And let's name it test mat. Okay, click on the newly created material. Click the albedo color bar and select a different color. I'm going to go with blue. Now, drag that material either straight onto the cube in the scene or onto the cube in the hierarchy. Uh, both will do the same thing. Your cube should now be the color that you chose. Now click on the cube and you will see in the inspector that the cube has test mat for its material. If you were to click on test mat again in your project and change the color, uh, the cube in the scene will instantly change to that color. You can also edit the material directly from the cubes properties down here, but just be careful because uh, if you do have several objects using the same material, then they will all change color. Okay, texture. Um, now, aside from color, we can also use an image as a material or a texture. This is pretty simple. Um, just find any image on your computer. Uh, I'm gonna use this purple texture image that I have. I will publish this to my GitHub along with a few others and leave a link in the description if you'd like to use them. But I'm pretty sure you're going to have at least one image on your PC. Uh, simply drag that image into your project window and Unity will automatically import it. Then drag the same image uh, from your project window onto the cube. The cube will instantly replace the color material we created earlier and have a new image on it you will notice that Unity has automatically created a material with the same name as the image and applied the image to it. If the material was not automatically created in the materials folder, then you can simply drag it in there and it will be tracked. Um, you can also make a new folder for images if you want to, to keep things tidy and put your image in there. Um, one other thing to note is the image is being applied to each face individually. Um, this is because there's no cube map for the cube or UV. Um, I have another video on making cubes with maps in Blender and importing them into Unity, which would help you with that if you're interested. Uh, but in the meantime, you could play with tiling uh, by clicking on the cube and dropping down the material and playing with tiling and offset. Okay, so that'll do for the mesh collider um, at this point. So moving on down, we're going to skip box collider because we're going to get to that in a second. Um, so that's kind of it for the default properties of this primitive. I'll leave it to you to try out the other shapes. So if we run this game right now, the cube will sit and do nothing. And that's because it has no body. So it needs a body to follow any kind of laws of physics, right? So let's give the cube a body. So in the inspector window of the cube, click add component. Um, in the search bar, type rig, and you should get an option there to select rigid body, not rigid body 2D, rigid body. Now, when you push play, the cube should drop away. Cool. All right, quick skim through the options. So click on the cube and scroll down to rigid body and you will see mass. So that is, of course, its weight and it's in kilograms. Um, the drag I define as friction, it's basically zero drag equals it never stops, it's like being in space. Um, put some drag on it to slow it down if you want it to, it to fall slower. Um, angular drag is the same and only for rotation. So if something is rotating with zero friction, it would never stop. 
um, disable gravity and of course the cube won't drop. Constraints are as you would think, click on an axis to freeze it and it will freeze it. Uh, freeze wire position and the cube won't drop. There's a lot of ways to stop the cube dropping. Um, okay, so we've given the cube a body so it can drop, but what happens when it hits the ground, then what? Well, let's add a different material to tell it what to do. So right click in the project window and select create and then physic material. And let's give it a name like bounce. Okay, drag the material onto the cube. Now click the cube and in the box collider window, it will be visible. Uh, it's only natural that it's there since it happens when it collides with something. Uh, now we need something for the cube to collide with, so let's make a plane. So right click in your hierarchy and select 3D object and then plane. Reset the plane's transform. Now move the cube so that it's above the plane at a fair distance. And make sure gravity is enabled on the cube and click run. So the cube drops as usual and it hits the plane and does nothing more. Uh, so stop play and select the bounce material in your project. And let's change bounciness to 0 0.8 and make bounce combine maximum. Uh, push play and now the cube should bounce. Yep, there she goes. So have a play with different numbers to get to your desired effect. You can find more help on the parameters in the Unity Help Guide by clicking the question mark in the Physic Material. And it will open up a little web page and you can have a read. All right, so at this point, um, you have a little grasp on primitive objects and their properties, and you also have some physics options. So now you could have a crack at building something simple using some primitives. Uh, I'm going to speed build something really simple real quick. I'll be right back. So this is my very simple and somewhat boring structure and I have a ball dropping onto it. Nothing fancy. So notice uh, I have the top part of the structure slightly tilted. Uh, this is because if I didn't then the ball would just continuously bounce straight up and down perfectly until it ground to a halt. Uh, you'll also notice that the exact same thing happens every single time you play it. And that's for the same reason, which is that it's basically it's all math and the calculations are always going to be the same. So later on in the series, we can start using scripting to make things a little more random and realistic. A couple of things uh, here that I probably should have mentioned earlier. Firstly, uh, the camera in your hierarchy is your game camera. If you select it and select your move tool, uh, you can move it just like any other object, and same goes with rotation. Um, so move it around and watch the view change in your game window and uh, find your preferred placement. And secondly, if you are building something a little more complex and you would like to group certain objects, then you can just drag objects onto one another. So let's say I wanted to group my L1 through to L4 to the base. Um, then I would just drag all four objects onto the plane in the hierarchy. Uh, now they are all children of the plane, so if I move the plane, then all of its children will move with it. Um, you could also create an empty object by right-clicking in the hierarchy and selecting Create Empty. Give it a name. Uh, reset the empties transform and then drag anything you want into that object. Um, we'll also get into parent-children relationships uh, in this later on in the series when we're scripting. So yeah, have a play around, and um, of course, if you have any problems or questions, don't hesitate to ask. So 
In the next video, um, I think we'll take a look at prefabs. Any game object can be a prefab. Prefabs are pretty much a must in Unity and uh, will save you a heck of a lot of time and resources to use them. They're basically stored in your project and they can be instantiated into any scene at runtime. You can have multiple instances of uh, the same prefab in the scene. And uh, by changing the one prefab, you will change all instances of it. So it can be pretty useful. Uh, you can even have a prefab variant which will inherit its original, but it can also be altered. Anyway, we'll get more into that next time. So I hope to see you in the next video.